Bob Sansa, we're here with Party Press Deputy Sports Editor John Plume. Now, John, the Twins have uh, they've picked up a decent number of games in the standings in the last two weeks. Seven they, and a half. Well, they've you know they were they won uh, going into the the first of the three games with Chicago. They've uh, what won nine and eleven of eleven games. So they got something going here. But I don't think Cleveland's going to be there very long. Detroit, I think, will be. They could still make things interesting and entertaining, but could they? Do you think they can make things to the point where people start saying, "Hey, this team can contend for the division title"? Yes, I do. I, I think with the way their starting pitching is performing, the fact that they're going to get Mauer back, they're going to get Nishioka back, they're going to get Morno back, they're oh, going to get Kubel, Tomey back, Span, they're going to get Kubel that, back, <laughs> they're going to get Span back. You know, I don't know how much of a factor Joe Nathan will be, but. You know, you're going to get these other guys back, and then Guardy's going to have to decide. I think one of the biggest decisions he's going to have to make, and, ben we, Revere. and we wrote about it in our paper today. Yeah, the whole thing with Revere. What do you do with him? Do you put him in, you know, left field and put Delman on the on the bench and make him uh, platoon him as a DH, or do you platoon Delman and, and Revere? But that's going to be a, a big decision they're going to have to make right there. But they have a chance to make a run just because Cleveland and Detroit – they're not great baseball teams. This is a very average division. It is, but Detroit, I think, is better than, than Cleveland, and uh, there's still a good amount of ground to make up. They're you know, they're, uh, 13 games under 500 heading into the series with Chicago. The thing about Revere, he energizes the top of the order. And frankly, if you can get Revere and Span as your one and two hitters, that really sets thing up when Maurer is back and you got uh, Morneau and, and he could put Kubel Ni- coming back too. And you could put Nishioka and Cassie at the bottom. Of That's the exactly order. where I was going. You put the, you go back eight and nine. That that almost sets up what they were looking to do at the start of the year, having speed. But but now you're adding one more speed element at the bottom. That's four guys coming at you eight nine one two with terrific speed. And Revere's got great speed. Well, it's it's interesting watching Sunday's Sunday's game when Liriano was through the no hitter. There was one point in that game where Gardy had four consecutive hit and runs called. And you, you you have to think that when they get these other guys back, you're going to see a lot of hit hit and runs. You're going to see a lot of stolen bases. They're going to run all over because they finally have some speed. And they haven't had that, and that's what they need in target field. The ball doesn't carry very well to the gaps. They haven't been able to hit a lot of home runs except for Kadir. He's had two in the last two, three-run homers in the last three or four baseball games. So, you know, you got to think speed. They're, they're going back to small ball, and the Twins are comfortable playing that way. Well, and, and again, it, it all. I mean, this is a big decision they have to make. I, it's, it's certainly imaginable of him being sent down, but it just it doesn't make a lot of sense because of what he can do. But it becomes a big numbers game then because you get when you get Kubel back and you get uh, Tommy back and you got Delman Young. I mean, there's going to be two of those guys are going to be sitting and just coming off the bench. Kubel's the guy you want playing because of how he played before he went down. I mean, I think it's likely you're going to see a platoon with Revere and Young. And, and like you said about Revere, this kid has a presence about him. He's got the big smile like some of the other Twins guys have had. He really enjoys the game. And I think Gardy, Gardy likes that about, about him. That's what he's been telling our reporters. You know, so I, would, I could care less if he smiles and likes the game. He energizes that lineup but, because of his speed. But you have to have guys who enjoy playing the game, and there hasn't been a lot of, a lot of that with the Twins the first three months of the season. And he, he brings a lot of energy. You know, he, he has a good time playing. And that's what this team's always been about when they've been winning is having a good time, having fun out there. And, and Revere's doing a lot of that right now. Well, and frankly, if uh, one thing that he could look at doing too, he likes what is doing because he's been coming on a little bit. You get Nishioka back. But you also, you, can give, you could give Valencia some time, some breaks at third and put Kadaya there, which gets you Kubel in the lineup. It gets you, uh, it gets you Revere in the lineup, Span and Delman Young if you want. And you get Tommy too when he's back. I mean, you, that gives you more flexibility. Start resting the guys who aren't producing. Yeah, you know, Valencia's got 27, 28 RBIs. It's not like uh, he's not producing out there, but the big thing with this team no, is... No, but you've got to go with whatever, what is your most potent lineup? And well, when you get Kubel back, you got to have him in the lineup. Absolutely. I mean, that, Toby might become it more, more, more times than not. Might become a pinch hit guy. You know, how, how do you take Kubel out of the lineup if you? Oh, I'm not saying DH. you take him out. You make him the DH. You put him in the outfield if you can. You but know, it is a number. There is the Delman Young thing is Delman Kubel and Revere. Oh I mean, yeah. One of them's going to have to go to DH. I mean, you almost you're right about uh, Jim Tomey. You pretty much have to make him. A pinch hitter. Well, the other thing you can do is you can spell span more than they've been doing. 
you know, Span had like what one game off last year? He well, 161 but, games. But how, do you want to spell him that much? No, you don't. But a day off here or there is going to keep the guy fresh. Sure. But the biggest question with this team is going to be number seven. How healthy is he going to be when he comes back? And the other thing is, he better hit and he better catch every day because if he doesn't, it's going to be interesting to see how the hometown fans react to Joe Mauer. Well, we, the the other thing is we're talking under the uh, with the impression that everyone's going to get healthy and stay healthy. That's not going to happen. You don't suddenly the way they've had these injuries, everyone stays healthy. So this thing could sort itself out. Well, and as Ship has said lots of times and written lots of times along with Kelsey, you know, one of the biggest question marks with this team is the bullpen. They're not very good. They're not very talented. They let Guerrero go. They let Crane go. They got rid of Roush. I mean, they have a lot of stiffs in that bullpen. Well, you get to see Crane this week. You get to see Crane this week, but they're not very good at the bullpen. The starting pitching has been outstanding the last two weeks. They've Scott Baker's pitched great, um, and, and Liriano's pitched – you know, fairly consistently over the past three or four weeks. So, but in the end, it, it'll come down to how well that bullpen how it holds up. And we'll uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that in the weeks ahead. That'll do it for now.